All right, welcome back to another day in the life of the underemployed. Um, I got some more time today, so I might as well work on this project. Still working on removing, basically stripping down this frame to find out what it's basically its, its capability is to be rebuilt. Hopefully that's clear by now. Um, as we left it last night, I had taken down the fork. This is steel, and I feel as if it's... I feel as if this is going to be the place where my mass is. This feels like I would be a good home defense unit. 1346.8 grams. Three pounds for that fork. I got the mass of the steel fork, which was 1346, almost 1350 grams, pretty heavy. Um, by comparison, a carbon fork is, is in the range of 500 to 600 grams. So um, could definitely gain some, potentially gain some reduce some mass there. But what I did is I just put it all back together, just because for now, I didn't want everything clanging around. So I put it, I just stuck it back on. It's all just loosely held together. Um, because I think now what I'll work on is taking apart the, the drivetrain. So first, the pedals. Okay, these are my Nash Bar Soho pedals. Love these pedals. Uh, they're from Nash Bar. Nash Bar, there you are. A, they have a flat side for around town stuff, and they have a clip inside, which is usually what I use, but I like to have the option. One of these was 166.1, the other one was 166.5, so 166 grams each, which puts me at uh, 332.7, so 333 grams for my pedals. All right, my chain is a KMC chain, it's eight speed, uh, very cheap, but it also has a, has a master link, removable, redoable master link holding it in. 311.2 for my 8-speed chain with master link. Okay, my rear derailleur is off. This is my Shimano Dior. It's the RDM591. I believe it's designed for 9-speed, but it's worth 9-speed, 8-speed. I even run this. This derailleur works with road shifters, 10-speed road or 9-speed road or 8-speed road. It works the same way. So you can run big cassettes on road with a long cage Dior shifter up until road 10-speed. Once you get to road 11-speed, it changes, but this is a monster derailleur. It can do so much. 291.2 grams. Okay, front derailleur next. This is another Shimano Dior derailleur. Again, it's the FDM591, so it's in that same family of components. This is a um, dual pull, meaning you can pull from the top with the cable or you can pull from the bottom with the cable. Again, very versatile, very useful derailleur. 177.3. 177.3 front derailleur. By the way, like um, front derailleurs are nice and light generally. So this 177, a nice light road double derailleur is like 120. So even between a really robust mountain, cheap front derailleur and a, and a road, a nice one, you're talking about 50 grams. So not the, not the costliest piece of machinery. So when I'm going to a one by a drivetrain, losing the front derailleur, it's not really about, I mean, it is about the mass, but it's just about the cleanliness and the simplicity more than the, the mass at, at that juncture of the operation. Okay, now I'm going to get on the crank set. This is a aftermarket, not stock, Vuelta Montagna, uh, 44, 32, 22, uh, mountain bike, chain ring, which like on eBay, this thing is like 25 bucks. It's a little heavy, but it's not bad. So let's get the mass of... The bolts, the non-drive, and the drive side all together. This is called the crank set. 823.3. The, the three chain rings, the crank arms, and the bolts. Now that doesn't include the bottom bracket, but that's not too bad. 823.3. Not lightweight in the modern world, but not bad. Not bad. So here comes the, this side is the drive side. It's got the bearing and the whole cartridge in it. And this is the non-drive side cup that I removed. So this basically, how this works is this goes like that and that th these thread into that bottom bracket shell. And these are the spindles that the crank arms attach to. The bottom bracket width is 68 millimeters, and the total the total width is 116, and it's by VP, which is a non. This is proud. This this is. Oh. 
275 grams on the dot. 275 grams for the bottom bracket. What I'm most interested in is the frame. So I don't necessarily have to disassemble the entire front end. I'm not going to disassemble the front end. I'm not going to itemize that for now. If, that, if that's something I get curious in later, I will revisit that. But I'm really curious about the bones here. Did I mass the disc calipers yet? Did I do that? So this is the rear brake caliper, Tektro Lira. It's a, again, it's a road pole, but I'm also including the, um, the bracket, which is the adapter. That's 192.3. Tektro Lira road short pole disc brake, uh, 192.3 grams. And let's get a quick mass on the front brake caliper. Same thing, Tektro Lira, front brake with the adapter and the bolts. 187. So it's the same exact caliper. It's 187. That means that this, this adapter is like five grams less than the other adapter is what it really means. So now I've got my drivetrain all ready to come off the bike. Now all I have to do is do what I did yesterday, which was to, again, release the, the top cap bolt just release the stem bolts. They're not on tight because I did this yesterday and then this whole drivetrain will just come right off. Okay, there it goes. So there we go. There we have my, my stem, my bars, my Shimano Claris shifters and my grip shifts. All of this in one handy package. Right now I'm just going to uh, hang it up over here. So now we're almost there. We're down to basically the frame, the seat, and the seat post. So first I have to move this a little bit, get the seat out of there. Okay, this particular saddle is the WTB Speed V. Yo, this seat is 383 grams. Oh my God, what a hog. This is a mass hog right here. 383 grams. Dude, the, uh, the hollow seats that I use, Dude, I'm floored. 383 grams. This is my $6 uh, hollow plastic, super, super pliable, how flexy it is. It's not that flexy, but it, when you're putting your body mass on it, it is. It's got a ton of give. Just so you, just to compare, 191 versus 383, almost 200 grams difference between the two saddles. That's a, that's a huge potential gain. By the way, this is just clamped on here super light. You don't want to clamp your down tube, or sorry, you don't want to clamp your seat tube, your down tube, your top tube. If you can avoid it, always clamp onto your seat post. But since I'm removing the seat post, that's the only time I would do this. Seat post, 283.3. So this seat post at 283 is not a huge culprit. This is actually not bad for a seat post, so this could be reused. Now I've resisted massing the frame yet, so I don't know. The truth will be told in a few minutes, but, um, in the purpose of full disclosure, I might want to repurpose this stem. And this stem is a one and one eighth to a older school. I think that's 25.4. That's for the, uh, you know, for the, the older narrow bars. The stems are usually like a little over a hundred. Let's see what this one is. And this stem doesn't have any markings on it. Usually stem length is taken from the center to the center. So this is, this is like a one, like a 100, actually it's like a 110, this stem is 110. That's 242 grams, 242.0 grams on that stem. And again, and you can go a lot lighter. So in a really awkward way, I've got this shoe box I put on its end, I zeroed it out, and then I added the bars, the, the, the combination brake lever, shift lever, the Shimano Claris Road 3x8, uh, levers, the grip shifts, and the um, the the, ho the cable housings from the bike frame, and of course the cables. So all of that stuff is on here, 996.4, which now leaves me with only one thing left to do, which is to mass the frame. All right, so it's pretty much moment of truth time to mass out my Gravity Zilla frame. This was a 29er uh, sort of monster cross type marketed frame from Bikes Direct. I'm sure someone else, some other name brand company has this frame design on their on their stuff. 
Okay, so we're ready to get the mass for this. I haven't cheated. I don't know. I've got my scale on. It's on a stable point. And if I hold the bike upside down, this is pretty much the balance point. It actually happens to be right on one of the, just about on one of the uh, water bottle dropouts. So that's what I'm going to go for here. Let's see if I can get that completely centered. And let me just, so that is, you can see that's, all the mass is on there. So let's see, what do we have? 2043.9. That's. Ooh, that's a little heavier than I was hoping for. 2044.1. 2044.1. I was hoping for 1700. So we're talking about almost 350 grams above my, my hope, which is. Yeah, what is that? Is that a pound? It's like close to a pound heavier just in the frame. But that might not be the end of the day. I mean, it's just a pound. Um, I could lose pounds off of my body easy, so don't blame the frame for being what it is. Um, but anyway, it's a starting point. Now at least I know. I know what everything on the bike weight. I know everything from, well, except for some of the parts of the, the shift levers, but those I don't really care about. I hope you got something out of this deconstruction of a bike. Um, I'll probably continue this process. I'll keep updating on the process. But for now, this little project is finished. Now I have my, I have my cheat sheet with all of my masses. And I didn't write down the last one, which is the frame. So this is all of the parts of the bike. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you got something out of this, taking a bike apart to try to itemize the weights of everything and to see whether the frame or some of the components are worth keeping for a more performance up or for a more performance oriented goal, or whether it's fine to just keep it as a tight sort of a workhorse commuter, don't care about performance type bike. All right, thanks for watching. Take care.